<laughs> yeah, I have Liberty getting knocked out in the first round. That's me. I would too. Sorry. <laughs> I, think I might have given them. I think I might have given them the first round. Listen, if you watch, if you watch the game though, and you see someone that looks like me in male form, that's my brother. <laughs> there you go. He's there, right? Yep. Him and my sister-in-law. I think the school of uh, school of champions is really going to pull it out this year, though. Oh, who? Nothing. Oh, the Alabama. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> no, Clem Clemson's not going to win it? They're like what? number seven. What? Apparently, Mount Pleasant's no longer Clemson. <laughs> yeah, Clemson. Who else is in there? Go Bucks. Bucks. How about Villanova? Go Villanova. Go Bucks. You know, Rutgers. Super Bowl champion. There you go. Um, right. Go Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. What sport are we talking about? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I think we were them. talking about basketball, but I just needed to let everybody know the Bucks won the Super Bowl. Yeah, sure. that they did. Tom Brady. Hey, and my son right. won like a bunch of pools on that. So there you go. Yeah. Love it. Tom Brady. Right, let's get, again. Let's get started. We have a fun, packed. I guess 30, 45 minutes. So we'll just get right to it. Um, ready, Karen? Yeah, let's do this. Awesome. So this is the state of the company. We're doing it once a month. And it's really just an opportunity for, for both market centers to come together, collaborate, continue to talk about what the leadership team has been seeing from a market perspective, some of the things that we're doing, some of the things that are coming up so that everybody can just stay completely involved and so that everybody knows what's coming up that they can get involved with. So um, without further ado, Tiffany, why don't you tell us what, um, from, a, from a training perspective, we have coming up. Um, well, I think Karen's going to be tying that all together at the end. Awesome. So we so, want to just get right into the numbers I would say let's get then? right into it because I don't want to give too much information because the stuff she's going to be bringing in to tie this whole conversation together are like the ones we really want to focus on so <laughs> i love it well then joseph why don't you go ahead and pull up your screen and let's look at some of those numbers okie dokie so we are going to jump into some numbers right now to kind of change the way we look at things because right now what we're hearing a lot of and and for in the market amongst agents amongst clients is lack of inventory right? Lack of inventory. And I think we need to start changing that because there's not a lack of inventory. There's inventory out there. The jump in buyers has increased at a higher level. So it's making it feel a little more painful. Um, so one of the things that we always want to look, look at that really will kind of give you a, a different perspective of this. And let me pull this up and make sure I have. Um, my correct info here. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick share screen. All right, so this is basically your rolling 12 months of closings, right, that we've had over the last three years. So obviously what we've seen here in the last, you know, we're at February of 2021. In the last 12 months, we've had 22,000 closings in Charleston. Obviously we've seen a jump, seeing as though February of 2020, we had 18,000. That's a pretty substantial jump. So jump of about 25%, right? Okay, so just not to get overly simplistic though, and I'll ask this question to everyone, what's the absolute must have for a real estate transaction to happen? What absolutely has to happen for a real estate transaction to close? You need a listing. You have to have a house to a sell. Listing. Seller will one hundred percent have to have a house to sell, All right? So there are not fewer listings coming on the market now. It looks like it, but obviously in the last twelve months, if we've seen a twenty-five percent increase in number of homes sold, we've seen a twenty-five percent increase of number of homes that have come on the market, and we haven't seen the same jump in the number of agents on the market. Now, why it feels so painful is we've seen a larger jump in the number of buyers that have come into the market. So that's what causes things like your days on the market to plummet. Right, our, meet, our average days on the market was 47, which by the way, should be an aha for you. 
right? 47 should be an aha for you because what that is saying mm -hmm. is that if your house doesn't sell in 24 hours, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. So the reason we have this discussion is, okay, so when you look back to this closed sales thing, what does that say to you? When you, when you see that number, what, what, what does that say to you? Houses are selling. Houses are selling. I think we do that. What else does it say to you? People are willing to sell. Okay. Even through a pandemic. All right. What's interesting about this is right now, I used to say in the lead generation class that right now is a harder time to sell real estate than there ever has been. And the reason has always been, the driving number for that has always been what? What's the driving number for us as a real estate agent that makes the business harder than anything else? Lack of inventory? Yep. Buyer demand? Yep. The suspense is killing me. Competition. Mm. Competition. It's always going to be the, the, the one driving force that makes real estate uh, a main. I can't say the only. A main driving force is competition, right? Who are we competing against? So if we looked at the MLS numbers, and I just got off the phone with it, uh, Joseph Cullum and the MLS, we basically flatlined on number of people in the MLS this time this year versus now or versus this time last year. So if we had 22,000 closings in the last... 12 months, that's roughly 44,000 sides. That's an average of six closings per agent. This time last year was an average of five per agent. So the opportunity for closings has actually gone up. We're just not getting out and getting in front of it because the market's so crazy right now and we're busy with current business. So again, it's just changing your perspective on it. Right. What does that look like? And then how do we take this information and what do we do with this information now? And I'll go back to Vince and Karen on this. What do we do with this information to, to build our business? And oh, by the way, if your business was not up more than 25%, let's just go back to this. And this is not a judgment. This is, this is just a statement of fact, right? If your business did not raise over 25% in the last 12 months, then you rose with the tide and you are vulnerable. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. You could be completely fine with that. There's no judgment if you're completely fine with that. However, you're vulnerable to be controlled by the market because you did what the market did. 100%. My, and to, to piggyback on that, the other day I was on a coaching call and my coach said in 2008, that was a market in which you had to work harder for less money or even the same amount of money that you made the prior year, um, but, but typically for less money. In 2020, or in this market rather, 2021, this is a market in which we have to work harder for more money. What market do we wanna be in? What market would we rather be in? What you've seen is the top 20% of the agent body is taking more listings or taking the majority of the listings, honestly and taking the majority of the closed units and growth, right? And Joseph and I went and looked through these numbers a little bit and Karen and the leadership team, and we started to look through these numbers and break it into different quartiles. Um, but what was really, really, really interesting about that whole thing uh, was the fact that those individuals are doing the work necessary in order to capture more market share. So what do we have to do as agents focus from a, from a one thing perspective to capture the market share and get back to the basics. Karen, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yes, I have a lot to add to that. You and I Can't talked to Seth about it. Um, lead generate for listings. And um, you have more information to share on stats before I share my screen. Yeah, I mean, really quickly, just one more quick perspective to go to that, to go specifically to listings. Here's your listing trend over the last three years. Right, you went up by 1.2 percent last year, and you've gone down by a, a net, I mean, eight percent. Right, and those are new listings that were taken over the month. Look at it in a quarterly period. You're looking at a three percent drop in number of available listings. Again, it's not an issue of having the listings; it's an issue of being the person that gets the listings. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, hey, Joseph. Yeah. When you said earlier on that other screen, you mentioned that if your business isn't up 25% on that one, was that about the units or was that about volume? I 
think that was units, right, yeah. Joseph? Yeah, yeah, it was. So yes, yeah, so it was. Yeah. yeah, it was about units. And here's yeah. why I asked the question because anytime you look at something that's about units, units always tell the story about how we're doing with activity, not the close volume, not the gross commission, right? If we do the work, the units show up. Now, can we control the value of the units and, and those things, you know, separately? Yes, we can. Right. Units is always the first gauge of activity in lead generation. Yep. Well, so, and then take this. So, you know, the, the screen that's on there now, that's the volume one. That jump was actually 36%. Per, What's interesting though, is what that's telling you. If you're, if your average, let's go to average because the medium's not, your average is up 14%, but your total volume is going up 36%. That just means you're having a higher net worth buyer come and purchase. It's not necessarily meaning your prices are going up. So that's good news, right? Just go find those buyers. And I think in my opinion, it keeps more of a stable market when you don't see a, a giant increase in, in average sales price. Mm -hmm. It's still going up. It's still 14%. I mean, that's not a small number <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not, it's not trending with the volume. So. 100%. Tam, what did you have to add there? And you were talking about all the things. I, I want to hear that. Yeah, so um, I'm going to share with everybody. I'm going to share my screen in just a minute, but I want to take you to a couple of things. And I give credit to Chip for pointing this out to me um, in the ship book. Pages 51 through 54, he had us read as a, as a group the other day as like a homework assignment. And um, I encourage everyone, 51 through 54, to read that. In there though, it talks, it's, it's interesting that Gary says, I thought lead generation was really difficult, but after I diligently applied myself to it for a reasonable length of time, I came to see that it was actually quite easy and could even be fun. So what we are doing and what our thought is here, um, I've been in the training room for the last two weeks. If you've walked past my office and you thought I was on vacation, I've actually been in the training room lead generating. 8.45 to 9 a.m. doing role play and script practice and answering questions. And then from nine to 11, lead generating and updating my command and writing thank you notes and doing all of the things that we tell agents to do. Um, and here's what's really, really awesome, the timing on this. So let me share the screen. The timing on this could not have come at a better time because, where did it go? And it's not gonna let me do it, is it? Ah, hold on one second. All right, I'll share the desktop. Let's see if this works. Okay. Can you guys see the sellers wanted? Yeah. Okay. So KWRI is doing campaigns now for agents to use specific to the market of the moment. So what would we be generating leads? What would we be lead generating for right now if we were hyper-focused on what is gonna bring us the most success? So it's all about sellers. This is a weekly thing they're gonna release is my understanding. Here's an email for you to send to your sphere of influence or past leads talking about the market and the opportunity. You can copy and paste all of this. Here's a telephone script that we will be practicing and utilizing next week. Oh, guess what? There's also a text in here, exactly what to say to your client. A social media post that was um, issued by KWRI 2020 medium, Home price is now 297, highest recorded price in US history. And it gives you a caption for that. And then this is my favorite. You go into command, you go into designs, you put what that property was listed at, only if it's closed from a big perspective. Once the property's closed, I think you can disclose this. And if you don't have a listing to advertise, go to an agent that does and borrow this information from them. If you were to post, and I've, I've heard some of the stories. If you were to propose this house was listed at 350, had 12 offers and sold for 375, do you think that somebody might respond to your social media? It's reverse prospecting, right? I love that Keller Williams has made this, um, or they made this so easy for us as, as agents and as for leaders to distribute it. So this is one of the key pieces we'll be working on next week. Um, Vince, are you going to commit to the challenge of lead generating in the training room? I am. It's okay. going to be fun. And we are inviting day. every single one of you. Um, tell your friends. <laughs> we're going to do it in both market centers and we're going to do some fun things around it as well. 
might even get a little competition. Yeah, a little competitive. Now I did stumble on one more thing this morning. Can you see this one? Refinancing? Yep. Okay. If you're on the call with the person and you open up the initial call, remember we're still doing care calls, right? So you want to start with, hey, how's everything start? You know, how's everything going? I hope you're safe. If anything was to come up that was to, you know, indicate they might need, need financial assistance or maybe some things were changing in their world, but they didn't necessarily want to sell or buy, could you not still offer them a refinance option using Keller Mortgage? And so here's some additional, same deal, so, social media posts. Like, so it's not, it's meant to trigger both to keep you in connection with your sphere of influence and to also, um, to help you help clients that you've been in business with that may not necessarily be um, in the market to sell or buy, because what are they going to do when you get them refinanced and save them some money? Right. You think they're going to talk about you, maybe tell their neighbor, tell their coworker. So. Refer you and you keep them in your ecosystem. You're constantly building value. I think one of the things that at family reunion, Jason Abrams talked about a lot, was this idea that there are two aspects of the real estate cycle from the standpoint of what a, what a client or what a consumer is going through. There's that phase between the, they say it's between three and seven years that somebody buys a house, right? Every three to seven years, a real estate transaction typically takes place. Well, during those three to seven years, what are we doing? We're cultivating the relationship. And if we don't cultivate the relationship at a high level, meaning bring value every time we talk to them, continue to build the relationship, cultivate the relationship, then we're not going to earn the second part, which is what we're all trying to do. That's the transaction, right? So in, in what you're talking about and what I'm hearing, Karen, is these are different ways that we can go and show the value to our sphere. And not to mention, it's already been created for us. So we get to leverage the infrastructure and resources of an amazing marketing department in Keller Williams so that we don't have to waste our time doing it yeah. but so that we can cultivate the relationships and find new relationships within our database that maybe are looking to buy, sell, or invest at one of the best times to do. do yeah. It. And then you mentioned going back to the basics. So like, if we go back to the basics, here we are. Um, Vince and I had a conversation yesterday and it just had, this is what I opened up and picked up last night to look for some uh, talking points. There's a chapter in here called putting it all together with focus. And it's got a quote from Will Rogers that said, even if you are on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. And I mean, that hit me like right in the forehead, right? So I know, I know some of you are actually really busy right now. And I know you're not lead generating because I see you running around like crazy trying to keep your deals together. And at the same time, like we know what happens if we get away from the basics and doing what matters. And what was interesting in this chapter is it gives five simple steps to maintaining focus. Number one is create a personal plan and make process your focus. Time block is number two. Get accountability is number three. Make sure your environment supports your focus is number four. And keep your energy to maintain focus was number five. And I think that by all of us collectively either gathering in the training room, and I know we're still in a pandemic, so we're not packing the entire market center in there. We have a Zoom option. <laughs> um, but by us being together, the energy, the environment, all of the things that Gary says in this book that we need to maintain focus are right there at our disposal. The Zoom option is a great option, by the way. I, you know, if you can't, I, I appreciate, you know, I love that you guys are doing that. And, and I'm going to be jumping in on the Zoom one simply from the accountability standpoint. You can mute yourself. People are muted. It's just simply showing up in a room to do so. Um, so it's forced absolutely. accountability. Yeah. Right? We know that right now we have that. That should be the number one thing we protect. Right. And um, things can get in the way. Current business can get in the way. What is what's also said in that book, Karen? They talk about the fact that we should never let current business jeopardize future business. Right. That's what we see so much the real estate roller coaster. Right. Yeah. I've got five deals going now, and then in three months, all of a sudden, I've got a goose egg. Right. Yeah, actually, what do we do in that time so that we don't have that goose egg? And it actually says accountability is the relationship choice for champions. And I promise you, I didn't go sit in the training room because I don't love my office. I went and sat in the training room with a big sign that said lead generating, you know, come lead generate from this time to this time. 
number one, so people would see what I was doing. And number two, so that I had to go do what I said I was going to do. Because <laughs> everyone here will tell you, I have to be held accountable as well. We all do. So I love it. And from a, um, anything else that we want to add? Um, you want to share the upcoming trainings? A hundred percent. Yeah, that's what I was going to go to next. As y'all yeah. segue into that, I want to really quickly go back. Thank you, Karen, for pointing those pages out, that 51 through 54. Um, that was but on page, <laughs> okay, well, So page 54, here's what I like. It's step one, stop doing what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us need to admit that right now, what doesn't work is not doing anything. Mm -hmm. That's for like, I don't think any of us have the challenge that we're doing something that's not working right now. I think some of us may, I think the most of us have the challenge right now of what's not working is that I'm not, I've gotten focused on current business and gotten focused away from generating the new business. Yeah. Or I've gotten stuck. So, all right, let me share this with you guys because we have some exciting things happening. Um, got a lot of tabs open on here. Okay. So can you see when with sellers? Oh yeah. Okay. Perfect. So what are we talking about today? Listings, needing more listings. Um, Win with Sellers is being taught March 29th from 9 to 4 p.m. with a short break in the morning, break for lunch, and break in the afternoon. Um, you may have already taken it. You may have taken it five times. I promise you every time I've taken this course, I've, I've learned something like invaluable. So you should have received an email on this. If not, we'll get it posted within the market centers. Um, that's the first one that's available. And, um, that one is, gives you, uh, information about Brad and the cost of it being $49 for that. And then let's see, spring masterminds, April 21st through 22nd. You can get to that by going to the maps, KW maps homepage. Um, if you've never participated in a maps mastermind, they're, awesome. And I did the virtual one in the fall. Prior to that, we used to go to wonderful, beautiful locations and get away from work and, and mastermind. And now we're doing it virtually. Um, the cool, the cool thing has always been though, the topics you're talking about are very much market of the moment. And in the past, it's always been the participants who drive some of the topics. Has that been your experience, Vince? A hundred percent. And it's, and it's usually some of the top minds in the company that, that attend masterminds. Many mm -hmm. of them are in maps coaching. So it's yeah. always unbelievably timely uh, topics. It's awesome. And I think they do their best to match you. Like if you're an individual agent, you'll be with other individual agents. If you're a small team, you'll be with small teams. If you're a group, you'll be with a group. I mean, like leader, they, they break us up based on our, our roles and our spaces in the real estate world. So even admins have a place at masterminds um in the past they've had stuff for them so definitely check that one out and then the last but not least um, i'm super excited about this one quantum leap is coming to the carolinas region being presented by dick dillingham <laughs> excuse me if you've ever had the opportunity to um hear dick dillingham speak he's um, or teach he's amazing um he's funny he is knowledgeable and he really puts out great learning opportunities. Um, and in particular, Quantum Leap is all about mindset and life choices and how you can, you know, dig in, as it says, dig into the power principles that can help anyone achieve a more abundant life. So practical exercises, models, things that um, I haven't had the opportunity to take this as an adult. My sons have taken the, the college version of it and I can tell you it was mind blowing. So I have already registered and I'm very much looking forward to this. So those are the three that I wanted to highlight. Um, anybody and Quantum Leap, foundational, Quantum Leap is one of the foundational courses of Keller Williams. It's actually the mm -hmm. course that Gary Keller pretty much built the company on. He actually went and taught this. Um, across the country or kind of across Austin when he was first building Keller Williams. Um, and that was one of the ways that he, he got into business with great people. I took this back in two, I'm taking this class, I think three times, three or four. Um, and with Dick Dillingham in 2016, and I'll say this, the course completely changed my life. And actually today I still have sitting on my desk right here, the mission that I wrote from a life perspective and what I believe to be my purpose and passion. 
that it sits on my desk. And I wrote it in this course um, on, and I guess it was March of 2016 with Dick Dillingham. So completely changed my life. And um, because we understand that everything is powered by a big why, everything that we're doing. And this market, like we said, is getting hard. Things are difficult. Lead generation isn't necessarily always the most fun thing on our calendar to do, which is why we give every excuse not to do it. But if we have, but if we're, if we're being powered by a purpose and we have clarity around that purpose, it makes us get up every day and go and do the things that are hard, kind of eat the frog, so to speak, as Brian Tracy has said in the past, and go and do those things and push through. And that's why also we're doing this from a collaboration standpoint between the market centers and being in the in the training room. Because Karen, you shared yesterday, you said those days when you get a no or those days where something doesn't really work and you've got a group around you that can support you through that and remind you maybe of your purpose or remind you about why you're doing it makes it easier to get back on the horse and, and ride the next time. Yeah. And to be honest, they don't even have to say anything. There's no chit chat that goes on, but you hear someone else having a good conversation and it kind of takes your mind off the conversation that just went wrong because don't think that because we're team leaders calling real estate agent, we don't get rejected <laughs> um, or we don't have tough conversations, right? And so um, I think for me, you have a conversation, you leave some voicemails, you're just not making a lot of contacts one day, but you've got an agent in there that is just crushing it and their scripts are polished and they're having great conversations. It it lifts all of, all of us up at the same time. 100%. And, and so so dial into the training, the the. Keller Williams training is our training calendars are massively robust and they're not designed to go to everything, but they're designed to go to the things that you need to help you get what you want when you want it. For example, if you're, if you've been challenged by listings or you're not, you're not seeing the, the 25% growth in your business year over year that the market is seeing and you want to do something about it because you want that growth. Then going to something like win the sellers absolutely makes sense and should be non-negotiable for you, right? Especially given the fact that it's free. That's right? what and I was going to talk about this. It is free, correct? I yeah, didn't I was going to let say that, but... that. That's what I was <laughs> okay. about to talk about because um, you've heard, you've seen the links and all that stuff. And so you've seen a price tag on all of this. And one thing that's really cool um, with each of our market centers is we've actually created an avenue through your ALC that we, we want to get this funded for you, right? So we have an education fund or a career development fund in both market centers as of yesterday, thanks to the ALC's involvement. So that if you want to go to any of these three trainings or all of the three trainings or two of them, or, you know, you know, all the variations of the number three, we can pay for you to do that with that fund. Like this is a fund that you're contributing to on a monthly basis on your AR bill. So use it, like go to these trainings. We wanna take out all of, we, we know there's trainings coming to you left, right, center, and we wanna be able to help fund that. And so, so know that this class is free. So you'll, if you're in West Ashley, you're gonna be hearing from Kristen. If you're in Mount Pleasant, you're gonna be hearing from Samantha. There's gonna be emails with links for how to register will register you. You just have to raise your hand and say, I'm in, right? Like I'm not, it's not a, it's not a, you go register, pay all the bills and then where you on re like, that's too much work. We're going to send out an email. We need you to reply and raise your hand to what you're going to go to and you're going to commit to. And cause we're going to follow up too. We want to make sure that you're, you're going to the classes or, and that we're presenting the things that you want to be attending to. And so that's why we want to bring those classes today. That's why we wanted to keep it to three, because these three are huge classes happening in the next 30 days. And we want you all to be able to, to attend as many as you want to. Yeah. And I'll just piggyback on that too. Um, family reunion content is still available to us as far as I know through April 12th. I don't know if that's going to be changed to a later date, but for now, April 12th, don't forget, pop on there in the evening while you're doing dishes or after you're done with family time and, and watch a session or rewatch a session and then look at these training opportunities and know that your leadership teams and your ALC are supporting you in your education and, and in your growth. So um, we're happy to help you out with that. And I'll just say the fact that spring masterminds is now going to be free for you all is something that's never been done in either market center. And so if you've never been to a spring a mastermind, it's kind of like mega camp on crack because it's very more focused and dialed in and top producers like go to that 
It's two days. 100%. It's not all day. It's like two middle of the days. Go to it. And it, it, you get the opportunity to dive into the infrastructure of the largest real estate company in the world, right? With some of the greatest minds in the business. Mm -hmm. We're talking about this being a challenging time, right? We're talking about all these different things that are happening in our market. It's uh, who has, we have never before seen an industry change so rapidly in just six months or a year, right? Holy smokes. To be in to be in a room, or rather to be via Zoom in a room with some of the top minds across the country in the industry that may and to get tidbits from them and mastermind with them and connect with them, not to not to mention create referral partners with them, is an amazing opportunity. And you get to do that for free. All you're spending is a couple of hours, right? So now commit when if you were if you raise your hand, I'm gonna ask if you raise your hand. This is, you commit to that time and because we're not just wasting the money here, right? This is, this is a commitment that goes on your calendar. And when it's on your calendar, you go to it and because you need it in your business or you want it in your business. So it's, it's an awesome opportunity. I'm so excited that uh, both ALCs have come together and, and made this a possibility for our agent bodies. Right. Really and cool if you're wondering why you've never heard about it before, it's because it just happened yesterday and we were going to announce it today or at team meeting. And here you go. You yep. are the first. You'll keep on hearing about it too. Yeah. You were the first to know. Awesome. Um, any other, any other uh, parting wisdom? Yes. We have to do the slideshow. Oh, oh, I forgot about the slideshow. <laughs> Thank God for you. For you, keep, that you keep Vince and I on the tracks, especially after Vince asked for these slides. Yeah, Look here. The I did ask for these slides. Last second this morning. So this is a this is a work of Samantha and Kristen. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, ladies. Let me see. Hold on. Bear with me. Also, come to team meeting next week if you're in Mount Pleasant. It's Tuesday at noon. If you're in Mount or West Ashley, it's Thursday at noon. Put that on your calendar, team meeting for March. You don't want to miss it. And for those of you in Mount Pleasant, I'm the one that chose Tuesday because some of you have asked me like why it was changed. We chose to have different days and I, I opted for Tuesday so you can blame I me. I love it. <laughs> so, and, and look at your respective calendars, uh, training calendars as well so that you get all the links and all that good stuff. So real quick, Karen and I, we were talking this morning and we wanted to... Um, recognize a few individuals and a few teams that in 2020 were recognized by our region and by KWRI. So a huge congratulations to these individuals. If I can change the thing. Here we go. So first out in West Ashley, the number 12 team in sales for the GCI is 725, the Synergy Group, John Joe and Drew Salazar. So a huge congratulations to them. That's awesome. The Friedman team. A huge congratulations to them. They were the number one expansion team with 3.5 million at GCI in the region. Which was almost That's, double the closest competitor, I believe. Right? Unbelievable. Then from a million dollar club standpoint, the Brian Beatty team made it onto the list, which is really exciting. Found Properties Group made it onto the list. Another awesome, awesome achievement. And the Jan Snook team made it on to the million dollar. I saw Jan on here, I think. So a huge congratulations to those teams. And our tech coordinator, or uh, yeah, our tech coordinator, Jay Kennedy, he was recognized as a tech hero within the region. So congratulations to Jay. And the amazing Tiffany Davis, the MCA Award of Excellence. Rockstar. Gold status, rockstar. Um, awarded for both market centers. It just says West yeah, Ashley, but both market both. centers. Yeah, I wanted to make that clear to everybody. Uh, the region and or KWRI doesn't actually recognize one leadership position for two different market centers. So clearly, yeah. she's represented us well in both, even though it it gives her credit for one. <laughs> exactly, that's for both naturally. So a huge congratulations to those individuals. Um, we're lucky to be in business with each and every one of you. But wanted to, 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 again, just recognize those successes from 2020. Absolutely amazing. Yep. There's some serious numbers, too. Holy smokes. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. So I look forward to seeing you 
in the market center or on zoom if you uh, need the links let us know i believe i put them into our um, daily email that goes out and we're going to be lead generating i you can get these off of connect they're also published on our facebook page and we will have copies here if you want a paper copy like me <laughs> i love it all right team if you need anything as always give us a call we love being in business with you. Have an awesome weekend. Have a great weekend. Thank you, guys. Thank you.